Hello everyone, welcome to Static Pharmacology on EMTV. This is a new segment, and in this one, unlike static cardiology, I'll be giving you just a patient care scenario, and your goal is to deliver a medication protocol. I thought this exercise might be a good idea to help the burgeoning medic or the paramedic student better understand the rationale and the reasons behind choosing certain drugs and certain medication pathways. To make it a little bit more challenging, I'll be putting a one minute timer on the bottom of the screen. So your goal is to read the scenario and deliver a medication based treatment before the time expires. Once the time is up, I'll be going over the answer with you and just be aware you don't have to go into the weeds with these medication protocols. Acute asthma exacerbations are one of the most common calls that we would get in EMS and certainly one of the most common patients that we see in the emergency department. Let's go ahead and dive right into this scenario and see if we can't develop a treatment plan based on what she's experiencing. So we're dispatched to a private residence for a 22 year old female suffering from an acute asthma attack. She's only able to speak in short two to three word sentences. Now generally the more words you can speak in, as an asthmatic, the better off you are. So two to three word sentences is not something that we want to see. Lung sounds reveal inspiratory and expiratory wheezing throughout. Generally, in a, as an asthma event develops, you're first going to hear wheezing only in the expiratory phase before you hear inspiratory wheezing as well. The worse off the asthmatic gets, the less expiratory wheezing you hear, the more inspiratory wheezing you hear. Vital signs are as follows. Blood pressure of 144 over 88, heart rate of 111, respiratory rate of 28, and SpO2 is 91% on room air. So before we get into the treatment, please remember, again, this is just a common medication protocol that you may or may not work your way all the way through. You don't really have to get into the weeds on this one if you don't want to. The recommendations I'm gonna be giving you in the next part of this video only highlight the major important medications that you would consider delivering to this patient. So again, this list is not all inclusive. This is just the basics. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So I thought I'd keep my treatment kind of familiar. For those of you who have watched my static cardiology videos, I'll begin by saying scene safe BSI IVO2 monitor. The first medication that I will consider administering is albuterol. It's gonna be given in doses of 2.5 milligrams and this is nebulized. Generally, when I'm treating an asthmatic, I actually like to start with a higher dose of albuterol. I'll start with five milligrams at a time. And there's really no theoretical cap on the amount of albuterol you can give somebody. The higher doses you get though, there is a risk that you're gonna induce some hypokalemia, but generally speaking, you're not going to approach those higher doses in the field. In addition to the albuterol, you can actually consider also mixing in ipratropium bromide, otherwise known as atrovent. So it becomes effectively what's known as a duoneb. There is a max dose on ipratropium bromide, however, and that is 1.5 milligrams. So you can only administer a duoneb three times. Beyond that, you can consider additional albuterol as needed. Beyond that, if the asthma event still hasn't broken, you could then consider administering magnesium sulfate given two grams IV. And this is usually given over about 20 minutes. Generally speaking, the rule of thumb is you don't give a gram faster than 10 minutes. So that's your speed limit, one gram every 10 minutes. 
You can then give a corticosteroid like methylprednisolone, otherwise known as solumedrol. Standard adult dose for this is 125 milligrams, and if all else fails, the asthma vent still hasn't broken, and generally you will never get to this point pre-hospitally. You can consider giving epinephrine 0.3 to 0.5 milligrams of the 1 to 1000 preparation given either IM or sub-Q, and of course, rapid transport. And that's it. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more. Until I see you next, keep washing your hands, have a good rest of your night.